Welcome, this is another Sigma Life Hangout. Today we're discussing on the topic of traditional Cypriot culture and notably dance. Today we have with us two of the best representatives of the genre, members of the refugee folkloric group Adulo di Shagalili, a group that has 40 years of existence in the Cypriot dance scene and not only. Elena Shagalili and Yorgos Odysseus. Welcome to Sigma Life. Thank you. Thank you. How did the refugee folkloric group Iadulo di Shagarli came to existence? It's been 40 years, it's quite a long time. Yes, it has indeed. If I may start, uh, this um, um, was created by our uh, choreographer and dancer, <coughs> Migis Shagarlis, back in 1975, and it was registered as a club in 1977. But this year we're actually celebrating, as you correctly said, 40 years of existence. And the basic aim was to maintain and to advance uh, our folkloric uh, culture, customs, our dances, songs, um, instruments, our, uh, traditional costumes, not only for Cyprus, but uh, as well as uh, globally all around the world where we have Greeks and Cypriots living uh, in all uh, continents, basically. It's been almost half a century. It's a long time for someone to serve the same purpose for that long. I would say that, that this was a life decision to create and form, to formate the refugee folkloric group and say that from now on we're going to serve this specific genre of dance culture. It's, it's the love of the dance. If you love to dance and you want to, to do this in your life, you have to do it all the time and progress. Mm -hmm. So the tradition, you have to try to keep the culture there, but also to make it more uh, to show that it's, it's going on and going on and on. So you have to make a research just all the time, um, considering the, the dancers, uh, the music, the costumes, and try to, to show this in Cyprus and uh, most of all in uh, the whole world. So, so basically it's the love for your it country. Never stops. It's, it's the love for your country, the country's tradition, the country's history. And it was your father, Elena Shagarli and Miki Shagarli, to say the relation that founded, that created this, this group. How was it for you growing up in this it's culture? A bet, it's a bet for me personally that uh, because of the name that my father created around this uh, culture, to, to make it, uh, to, to keep it like that and uh, make it better. Uh, so being as a dancer from, a, from these ages, uh, from, from three, the young ages, the young ages and now the main choreographer, um, it's a lot of, it's a big, um, let's say... Um, it's a bet, it's, it's a life a goal to, s a to keep up with and him, because he was a pioneer. Tra traditional dancing, which has to be, yes, to progress it, but to show the real thing. I mean, not to, um, to be there and to show it correctly. Not to be too touristy, let's say, yes. but keeping, staying true to the traditions and your father was the first one, I was going to keep that for later on, but since we're on the topic, your father was the first one that actually went through the research and the books and the, uh, the countryside and went he to people's... He was one people's of the first to choreograph um, uh, the dances. Um, it started from... Um, because before, dancing, uh, traditional dancing was doing, was dancing weddings and some uh, small, uh, um, I will say, Get together, gatherings, yes. parties, <coughs> and uh, events, after life the, events. After um, around 56, he started to keep to do choreographies. So yes, that's what make the dance more popular. And uh, through the the events we used to dance for um, uh, in Cyprus, in, uh, in around Cyprus. So we try to keep it. Um, this, uh, Looking at it chronologically, 40 years ago was the Turkish invasion in Cyprus and that came hand in hand with the creation of uh, the folkloric group. Some would say, some would ask, someone would ask, do the two relate? Indeed, yeah, they, they, they relate uh, very closely actually because uh, it was uh, the formation of the group was actually one year after the Turkish invasion which was in 74. So um, Migis Chagalis and uh, his wife Maro Chagali uh, who lived in the occupied area, had to move in the free part. They were <coughs> where, refugees. Yes, they, they were refugees, among other refugees. And the, the formation was, uh, was the need to keep alive 
the, the tradition, the customs, and these uh, folkloric dances, which, mind you, they are like museum dances. You don't see them every day. So our aim is to actually keep them alive and uh, to expose them, as I said before, abroad, not only just in Cyprus. So at that time, it was really difficult times to do that. And the first two appearances that the group did, uh, our uh, group did, were actually for charity purposes with the Red Cross Society to raise uh, funds to help the refugee community which emerged from the invasion. So, And then the group, the members of the group, group started traveling abroad to refugees that had fled to other countries and spread the word, the message that we're going to keep the tradition alive and bring up spirits to people and that it, were feeling homesick. And it's very strong to those people in the, the whole world. In uh, We went, we travel almost uh, from Europe, uh, Asia, America, Canada, uh, Africa, South Africa. Africa. Yes. So it's very strong because they want to keep and to be near in our tradition. Uh, that is considering our uh, refugees that live mm -hmm. abroad. But I will want to say something about the style of the uh, traditional mm -hmm. culture uh, of Cyprus. And it is uh, very um, interesting for other countries because we we get together with other countries in folkloric festivals abroad. So what you gain from our style of dancing is that you see that the ladies are very show... Uh, um, uh, They're demure. Yes, and the men are very um, loud and, and, and like to protect, uh, protect our women, the mm -hmm. women. And this is a big difference between men and women, something you don't see in other, most of the other countries when they do folkloric dancing or even the music. And it's, uh, it's impressive, and we have very good comments um, and from, the, from all around the world, from other countries. And also the solos we have. We have the solos of the Drabani, the Tacha. The Which, Arab for those of you who don't really speak Greek, the Drabani is what they use to cut the wheat from the fields, and the um, Tacha is what they use to filter the, yes. the seeds from the actual flower. Exactly. And because the traditional dancing came from agricultural life in Cyprus back in the day, in, in really old times, they used their daily lives as a way to represent yes. their pleasures, their happiness in mm -hmm. every life event that they might have had. And that was the only way they could have done it back mm -hmm. in the day. And that stays and that shows that Cyprus was an agricultural country, that they were out in the fields for so long. And I want to say something very specifically about the type of dancing, not just the solos that show how the men are really strong and protective, as you mm -hmm. said, but the, um, the community dancers, let's say, not, not just the group dancers. We, the group created a folkrotic scene of a Cypriot wedding mm -hmm. that goes through every single aspect of two people uniting in a church via yes. wedding, because that what happened, that's what happened in Cyprus yes. in old times now. Well, and from people that, don't really go to churches <laughs> that often in the same way. I mean, it's not a three-day, four-day event. But the group codified what happened, the before, the during the day, the after the day of the wedding. In a traditional wedding, you can see all the dancers, all the dancers, from the group dancers and the solo dancers that is done in a traditional wedding. Even then, that used to be many mm -hmm. days, uh, as you said before, and even today, you can see in a wedding that we, we use all the dances in a Cypriot uh, traditional wedding. And also I want to say a point about the costume. Um, oh, yeah. uh, Miki Shagalizu wanted to show very much, um, to be proud, uh, to see the proud uh, from the, uh, not only from the dance, but also from the costume uh, and from the men and from the ladies. And I want to say that especially the ladies' uh, costume got the uh, first prize in Russia in around uh, 1983. Okay. The first prize for the design uh, we did. Uh, Which was really thought out by Miki Shagalis because, as you said before, they traveled around Cyprus. They talked to old ladies that were wearing those costumes, well, the dresses back then, and then how they made them, what colors they used, what and there are many they costumes used. around the mm -hmm. Cypriot uh, traditional uh, costumes, but we chose one of the best and one of the most uh, colorful ones, and we use the Carpacitigi mainly. Uh, but in some occasions... From the town of Karpasi. Karpasi, Karpasi yeah, yeah, the, yes. the peninsula. That area. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use also others, but it's the Karpasitik is our main uh, costume we mm -hmm. use. Uh, 
But, during, you know. during that time, I think the first prize award was actually for the re representation of the Cypriot wedding as well, apart from the together. costumes together. together so we got yes. the first prize award for uh, performing the uh, what you just described, mm -hmm. like the two, three day event of the traditional Cypriot wedding, which not only shows all dances, but also a, l a lot of songs, a lot of customs that we used to have uh, during those times, and we represent those through uh, that uh, performance, let's say, of the Cyprus wedding. And it's just, <coughs> it's not just a dance performance because you bring together artists from all spectrums of traditional uh, culture, let's say, uh, musicians, mm -hmm. singers. Um, Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you, you have people that you work with on, uh, on regular basis or you went out and found different people for different occasions. How did that it work? It happens in both ways. So we have our main. Uh, we have the main, uh, let's say, core. Depending on uh, what you have <coughs> to to show, you have also people cooperating with you to do something for a specific reason. For you, it was a lifestyle. You grew up in this. You don't know any different. You don't know how life would be without dancing. But for you, your was, it was a very cognitive decision. I want to go and learn dance. I want to go and learn and keep learning Cypriot dances. How did you decide to dedicate your free time to tradition? I think Elena just touched upon this before. It's the love for what you do and the passion. Basically, I would say it was my parents' decision because I started dancing at the age of five at uh, uh, Elena's parents' uh, dance school back then and later on joined the folklore group. So uh, this passion and this love for this art uh, has led me to actually also be part of the committee now and. Uh, I would like just to make a comment here that Elena indeed has a really tough work to carry on uh, what uh, our late Migis Chagalis uh, created all these uh, decades. Uh, and indeed, uh, I think we proudly, proudly represent Cyprus and the traditions through our appearances abroad. If I may say a couple of um, you know, very important stops yeah. uh, during our uh, career in performing abroad. Uh, most recently ones that I also attended, we had, uh, you know, when uh, Cyprus joined the EU family on the 1st of May 2004, our uh, group, Adul Shagali, uh, accompanied uh, the uh, then President of the Republic of Cyprus in uh, Ireland uh, to celebrate and dance during the formal celebrations, let's say, uh, of so Cyprus So you accompanied, entering. let's say, the government of the time representing exactly. Cyprus. You were chosen mm -hmm. to represent Cyprus during the accession. In channels, in channels, so we went with the president. Yes. Uh, with the President Vasiliou uh, before that. Vasiliou yeah. was then, Mr. Babadoulos was uh, in So in you were actually, and excuse me for saying, I feel that I have in front of me two unofficial ambassadors of Cypriot tradition, of Cyprus in general, because you go out in different countries, not just keeping the spirits up for refugees that have migrated to other countries, but mm -hmm. representing and letting people know of Cyprus in other, in other countries, in other cultures. Mm -hmm. And you know, if to hear to, to show that your tradition, I mean, even if we do also other styles uh, of dancing, the Cypriot dance, you get it from the heart because it has to do uh, with your country. So for me personally, I think also George feels that, you feel very different dancing uh, when you dance uh, traditional dancing. Do you feel the weight of responsibility when you and put the on costume the costume? You, wear. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are representing, as you said before, your country. I, so I can understand. You, you said yourself, Yorgo and Elena, you grew up in this. You grew up in Cypriot culture, dancing Cypriot, traditional Cypriot dances. But 40 years on, it's almost half a century. How do you keep it interesting? I mean, do you get new dancers? How do you get new dancers? Do the youngsters care about the Cypriot tradition? Well, I mean, again, it's, it, has to do, it has to do with the, with the love of what you do. Initially, to the aim give was... The love. And to give the love, to pass it on. But yes. uh, initially, Miki Shagalis wanted the refugees to, be, to create this group. But as you understand later on, uh, you know, years ahead, uh, we encouraged young people who love the dance and the tradition to join. So we do have a very strong team uh, of unofficial ambassadors, as you call us, because it's teamwork. It's not just you know a few people, but it's the whole group. And uh, with this, uh, I just have to say to your audience that you are part of it <laughs> as well. And uh, thank you very much for you know, us. giving us the opportunity to present. It that. is an honor, as <laughs> you said. 
wearing the costume and mm -hmm. representing Cyprus, it's really an honor. You feel honored. Exactly. And you have the need to respect uh, of what you wear and what you do and you represent the country and the tradition. So at Marseille was a couple of years ago or three years ago was another stop that also you were there as well. But uh, just to let the people know is that we were chosen to be the honorable country among, you know, a uh, dozen or more countries there. So one day was dedicated in, uh, for in Cyprus France, in, in France, yes, Marseille. exactly. So that again was uh, one way to actually uh, advance and uh, expose uh, our country and our tradition and our folklore culture uh, in many different cultures in one day. And the dancers' ages range for from uh, 10, 15, 12, 15. 15. 15 to 70, mm -hmm. the, the ones that can <laughs> still dance. And I want to say about the 40 years you said before, the best uh, way to celebrate this 40 year, we're doing big, uh, a big uh, event. We also, it's one year now that we are trying to make this theatrical dancing, singing performance uh, with more than 60 uh, dancers from all times because we the, from the, school, the 40 years we that have been we, okay from the group we um, around 300 dancers passed from mm -hmm. 1975 till today so we tried to gather all ages for four generations to do this big celebration for us um, with a very nice uh, written script by Kiros Rosidis, uh, mm -hmm. Rosidis um, the director and friend of my father so we try to keep this also in and showing in this. And since we said that I, I am a part of it, we could say that we honor our tradition and our history, honoring the history of dance itself. So it's going to be a journey from not only for the origins of Cypriot traditional dancing, but for dancing in, in general. general. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, for the people who are now watching us uh, outside Cyprus abroad, I uh, would like to say that we do often, mostly summertime, try to attend festivals in Europe and other continents. We're now discussing for next year, uh, for people who are in the United States or Canada, possibly, it's not confirmed, <laughs> we may be there, if not somewhere else, but we would love An invitation to, from uh, Australia we would like to come. Yeah, Australia so is one place we've never been. if anyone's watching from Australia, we'd love an invitation. <laughs> Please invite us, yes, <laughs> <laughs> we would love to join. And for everyone watching, <laughs> keep an eye out. Uh, refugee folkloric group Adulodi Shakali. They're touring around the world every single year, especially now for the 40 years. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the invite. Thank you. And thank you for watching.